Hawkeye basketball with another collapse as they fall at the hands of Maryland on the road. Another late lead slips through the fingers. And you think that was bad? I'll wait until we talk about Iowa's new wide receiver coach today, Locked On Hawkeyes. You are Locked On Hawkeyes, your daily podcast on the Iowa Hawkeyes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, welcome in. I'm Trent Condon, and this is the Locked On Hawkeyes podcast. Thanks for making Locked On Hawkeyes your first listen every day. We're available wherever you find podcasts, and you can also find us on YouTube. While you're there, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Helps us get in front of more Hawkeye fans. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. New customers join today. You're going to get $150 in bonus bets. If your first bet of $5 or more wins, visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn to get started. Well, more of the same for the Iowa men's basketball team. Another one slips through their fingers, this time at the hands of Maryland, a road trip out to the D.C. area, and it goes like many of the games have gone so far this season. An opportunity late in a basketball game to win, to put yourself in position to maybe make a little bit of a run, or at least get the excitement level raised, and then lay an absolute egg, and that's what happened once again for this Iowa basketball team. Leading late in the game with 10 minutes to play by eight points. That lead quickly dissipates in an ability to get stops and an ability to get shots. And here we are left today. A, a lot of stories down the game, but it's obviously the melt down the stretch that's going to get the big one. Uh, foul discrepancy down the stretch. Iowa, uh, for the final 11 minutes of the game, there was not a foul called on Maryland, which is all well and good. You know, I I, I think a lot of people, if you listen every day, you every day is no call a lot of high school sports. I mean, high school gyms call in high school games throughout the course of the year and hear a lot of the complaints during basketball games. Oh, look at the foul discrepancy. Even it up. No, 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 no. That is not the job of the official to even up the fouls. That's not what it is. When a team plays a particular style, they very well could have more fouls than the other. We know Maryland plays that clutch and grab style of basketball. And Willard, that's the way that his teams play. And it's the Tom Izzo effect and the Bo Ryan effect and something that maybe has ruined Big Ten basketball over the last quarter century as we're now going on that long since the last time a Big Ten team has won a national championship. Maybe there's a reason for it and this garbage that we see in this style of play that's played in this league. Instead of actually being able to play up and down and entertain brand of basketball and ultimately a basketball that will win you a national championship, we get this garbage. And Izzo's teams did it. Wisconsin's teams have done it. We've seen it all over the place. And it's not good for the sport. It's not good for the game. It's not an entertaining brand of basketball. Maryland plays that style. Fine. They didn't follow over the last 11 minutes. Come on. I mean, that's just ridiculous. I'm not one to complain about officials. I think it's a loser excuse, and I don't want to go there. But one team plays that kind of style. Iowa plays the patty cake style they do defensively, and it's 11 nothing and fouls during an 11-minute stretch. There's a problem there. Maryland gets to the free throw line 26 times. They go 21 of 26, including 17 of 17 in the second half by two guys. Um, you have that part of it. Iowa 4 of 6 from the free throw line. But more than anything, this is an Iowa problem. And when things got tough, the same issues cropped up again. An inability to have a guy that can go off the bounce and get to the rim. You now, if Tony Perkins is clogged up, where else do you turn? Owen Freeman is great for what he is in his freshman campaign. He's a rim runner. He get to the bucket. He can do some things with his back to his basket. He is not a fully formed, though, offensive player. Ben Cricky, if the mid-range game is there, he's almost unplayable. And we see it tonight with one rebound. Uh, the, the rebound totals at this point, he, he's averaging over the last five games about a rebound every 10 minutes. He's 6'9". It's unthinkable. But this is what you got. And this is what Fran wanted. He had an opportunity to go out there and get a couple of skilled bigs. After B.J. Mack decided to go to South Carolina, he went a different direction, taking a look at a couple of MVC guys instead of going with Rink Mast, a better defender, a better rebounder. Instead, he went for more offensive skill with Ben Cricky. You see, the rebounding isn't there. The defense is atrocious, and this is what you get. Fran has a type, right? We all have a type. And for a basketball player, 
Fran's got a type. And if you got offensive skills, you're his type. Defensive skills be damned. If you got offensive skill, Fran's going to like you. But the spazzing out offensively, it just, it continues. And he can't get a shot, and he can't get anything going. I mean, how many fadeaway jumpers at the end of the shot clock did they take over the final 10 minutes? Six, eight, ten? Felt like just a huge number. Just terrible shots, bad shots. But that's all they could get. The offense got bogged down, and there's nobody on the team. You don't have a true point guard, or at least nobody that you're confident with. And Brock Harding came in, and I thought played pretty well offensively. On the other end of the floor, though, it wasn't as good. And, and he saw that play out during that game when Iowa really had done a really nice job up until about that 10-minute mark against Young, who killed him late in the game, in the game at Carver. Jameer Young is able to get to the free throw line, get an opening with Harding out there. They have to go zone. What does it lead to? Guess what? Stop him. You heard me th- heard this one before. A wide open three pointer that, of course, Maryland hits. The worst three point shooting team, the worst offensive team, and many statures in the Big Ten this year. In the second half, what do they do? They average 1.56 points per possession. That's not just elite, that's ridiculous. 1.56 points per possession by Maryland in the second half of this game. After being up 58 50 with just over 10 minutes to play, they get outscored 28 to 8 down the stretch. I was one of nine from three. I mean, it's a bad combination when you have a group of guys that can't get to the rim and they can't shoot from the outside. Not really the combination that you're looking for. This is a poorly constructed game. After Patrick McCaffrey thought maybe during the first half we were going to get good Patrick, it was not there in the second half. He was brutal. He had the worst plus minus of anybody on the team. Minus 14. Had just an awful, awful turnover during that run as Maryland was getting back into the game and eventually overcoming and taking the lead. It was bad. So the question is, what next? Look, this team's not going to the NCAA tournament. The NIT is still on the table for them. What does that mean? I don't know. A couple thousand of your closest friends make your way to Carver to watch them play some bad team from the, I don't know, Horizon League. That gave fired up. Now, if they make a run, we'll get excited. They got to do it. And nothing we've seen out of this team has the consistency to even make a run in the NIT. It just isn't there. Oh, and by the way, Now the schedule actually gets tough. It hasn't been tough here. Iowa gets what they are. And we can go back and we can lament this loss, the first game against Maryland, the home loss to Michigan, letting one slip away against both Penn State and Indiana on the road. And we can talk about all these things, but also realize this is a bad league. The Big Ten is bad this year. It's okay to say that. You're not going to lose your fan card for saying that. It's okay. It's down this season. That's all right. We'll see about Purdue. Look, we know about their March troubles that they certainly had. They haven't been to a Final Four since the last time I was at the Final Four in 1980, the year I was born. That's how long ago. That's a long time. I had a lot of gray hair under the stocking cap. We'll see come March. You think Wisconsin, Nebraska, Northwestern, Illinois, do those teams have runs in them? Can Izzo go with his magic pixie dust again in March? Hasn't happened very often as of late. It's a bad league. And in a bad league, with a schedule that was very conducive going on the run, Iowa now sits with a losing record in the Big Ten at 6-8. and eight. And now it gets tough. Two with Illinois, road trips to Michigan State, two Northwestern. You get Wisconsin coming in this weekend. It's over. And that's fine. We got to play for the future. What is the future of this Iowa basketball team? We will talk about that. What does Iowa need if they are going to compete? And we got some football news. We have a new wide receiver coach, something I told you a month ago. And it's not real exciting. John Budmeyer moves from analyst and special assistant to the head coach to wide receiver coach. Whew. Is that going to bring in the recruits? We'll break it down as we continue. This is the Locked On Hawkeyes podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. Get buckets with your first bet on FanDuel. It's America's number one sportsbook. Because right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150. If your bet wins, bet all on your NBA favorite, your players, your teams, whatever you like with FanDuel. They have quick bets. While games are going on, find something very quickly that you enjoy. Same game parlays and their live same game parlays. Exclusive props, a future menu, NBA All-Star game right around the corner. We know there's going to be a whole lot going there. Oh, and that's not all. 
Of course, they got college basketball up there. They also have lines for women's college basketball, including the possibility of Caitlin Clark breaking the record coming up on Thursday night, and they'll have the line up for Iowa against Michigan. Visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn and shoot your first shot. FanDuel, official partner of the NBA. <coughs> Trent kind of back with you again here on the Lockdown Hawkeyes podcast. As always, thanks for making Lockdown Hawkeyes your first listen every day. The future of Iowa hoops. Where do we go from here? After another Hawkeye basketball collapse, the season's done. Though they will still play more games. <laughs> they're, they're not just going to end the season. Yeah, they, they will finish out the slate that's in front of them. So what do you have to do? Well, I think at this point, you do have to see if Brock Harding is passable as a starting point guard. Think offensively, he's going to improve. Look, the shot needs a lot of work from the outside. We've seen that throughout the course of the season. You know, with his speed and his quickness, though, the ability to get into the paint, you saw that a couple of times in the limited minutes he got in the second half of that one. He is a liability defensively because of his size. And even with that quickness and the things that he can do and poking the ball away and he got a steal in the game, there are still certain things that you can't do and certain matchups that he's going to be eaten alive. Can you live with that? Because if not, that has to be number one for next season. Finding a way to bring in a real point guard. Look at Fran McCaffrey's tenure. And now 14 years of Fran. Great offenses. Seemingly every single year. They've been great. Not just good, great on the offensive end of the floor. The efficiency numbers year after year after year are at an elite level. And they've done it all with five and a half years of Jordan Bohannon. Mike Gasell for four years, some bit parts here and there. They're basically playing without a point guard right now. Dixon, Perkins, neither of those guys are real point guards. They can do it in a pinch, and they're doing it right now. But they're not what you think of with a point guard. Go back to Cartwright, the first point guard. The guy they found, what, in like July? He's the best point guard that Fran has had. Pure, strict point guard. Now, Bohannon was more of a shooter than a point guard, though assist numbers and all those things, great numbers historically in his career. He's not one you're thinking about, right? When you're thinking about the old school point guard, the break down a defender, get to the rim, do those things, be the facilitator, do everything that goes along with it. Those guys are out there, and it doesn't have to be the elite of the league. It doesn't have to be one of the best players in college basketball, but there are plenty of guys that you can find to bring in that can help solidify that position. If you believe that Brock Harding is not the guy next year, because the rest of the pieces, I think there's a lot to be excited about. We know about Owen Freeman. Laje Dembele, I think, has huge upside of what he's going to do. You bring in uh, Cooper Koch next year along with Tajo. Both those guys, impact players potentially in the front court. Peyton Sanford, he can make shots. Josh Dix can help you out. We know these things. If Tony Perkins decides to come back for another season. And then you throw in a real point guard. A point guard that is going to do what Fran wants. This team can be right back to the NCAA tournament. I believe that has to be number one. That has to be at the top of the list what Fran's shopping for. You want more help? Do you want a traditional big? Look, if Fran's going to go out there shopping again for another big, I'm sorry, it can't be another guy like Ben Cricky. It needs to be a real defender, a real rebounder, a real guy, the tough guy in the middle. They didn't get that. That's what you have to be looking for, and that's certainly what you have to do. Frustrating night. Very frustrating night. Hopefully tomorrow night will not be the same way. As Iowa gets ready for the matchup on the women's side against Michigan, we will talk about that. Before that, though, let's talk some football. It is official, something that if you're an everydayer here of Locked On Hawkeyes, you've known for a month now, John Budmeyer is going to be the wide receiver coach, uh, something that, at least from one of these scholarship receivers, was not handled well when that news was uh, passed along to him a month ago from what I had heard. Anyway. It's Bud Meyer. Now, as we talked about with Tim Lester, when that initially was said, it was uninspiring. It was, okay, here's a guy that exactly doesn't have the most glowing resume, but I bought in. I got there. I got excited. So the problem that I have with John Bud Meyer is not that he hasn't coached wide receivers before. It's not the problem. How does he recruit wide receivers? Well, that's your position group. What is he going to do? What is he going to sell that's going to make 16, 17, 18-year-old kids say that I want to come to Iowa and I want to change this? 
Now, I want to be the wide receiver that becomes the next Marvin McDonough, DJK. Hell, Amir Smith Marset. I want to be that guy. I see that, yes, you can do it at Iowa, and I want to be that guy. And I want to change the perception. I don't know John Byer, Judd Byermeyer and, and what he's known as as a recruiter. From the little bit that I've heard from him, he's not the most dynamic personality. And what do you usually get with wide receivers, right? Usually some guys with some flair, some flash, a little bit extra. On the surface, and that's all it is, doesn't exactly seem like this is the guy that's going to change what they're doing and bringing in the kind of guys that can compete at the highest level. Now, here's another component, and the wheels are turning, and this is just a theory. But going back to the hiring of Tim Lester, remember at the time I told you that John Bidenbeyer was going to be the wide receiver coach, and that obviously played out even before Lester got the job. During the interview process, and when Kirk Ferentz got down to his final two of Kevin Johns, which I think a lot more people wanted over Tim Lester, was it told to them that you were not going to have an ability, even with an open spot at that time, in the coaching staff to bring in a guy that you worked with in the past that will help you implement that this new wide receiver coach is going to be shoved down your throat? Likely. Could it be that Kevin John said no way? Possibly. Again, that's just speculation, conjecture. Don't know anything about that side of it. Did that maybe also taint the pool of potential offensive coordinators? When they looked at the opportunity initially and say, not only can I go here and change the offense and maybe really elevate my stock as a signal caller and potentially getting back for guys like, well, you look at Wisconsin and obviously their former coach there and Paul Christ and potentially getting back as a head coach. Was that something that ultimately left them saying, I'm not so sure on this front. We'll never know. I mean, the likelihood we, we will never know is that something that was already dictated to these candidates, but certainly a theory that makes a whole lot of sense. Bud Meyer in his one year as a play caller at Colorado, it didn't go well. They went three and nine. Starting quarterback, 15 touchdowns, 10 interceptions. Now, that sounds great after what we saw the last couple of years. 98th in the country at Colorado State in points per game. 3.8 yards per carry. Not exactly awe-inspiring. But you couple that with his one year as an OC with the Rams, with what he's done the last two years. So he was brought in because very quickly, everybody realized that Brian Ferentz was in over his head as a quarterback coach. He had no clue. It's not a surprise. We told you that at the time. If you're listening to me on the radio, I said the same thing. Yet here we were. Ah, yes, but now we got the guy. We got Jim Bidemeyer. What does he do? Uh, 2021, uh, excuse me, 2022, leads the quarterback play with Spencer Petras in his final go-around. And it combined seven touchdowns and seven interceptions out of the quarterback that season. Again, compared to this year, that sounds pretty good. That's what Bud Meyer was brought in to do. This season, he helped bring in Deacon Hill. Also got Cade McNamara. Okay. What did you see out of quarterback play, though, that made you believe that, as Kirk Ferentz said, he's a good coach? Good fit? Possibly. Yeah, maybe he's fun to have a beer with. Maybe he's a guy that's great to watch football with and watch film. Are we sure he's a good coach? We'll see. That's another thing. As so many people right now, for whatever reason, this is becoming more and more just, hey, just let's see. I'll tell you what. I have a radio show five days a week. I do a Hawkeye podcast five days a week. I got a lot of content. I got a lot of things to say. And if all I say time after time is, well, we'll have to see, and not give you opinion, you know how awful that would be? Look, I'm not a newsbreaker, right? I'm not a journalist. It's not my job. I'm an opinionist. I give you opinion. I'm a provocateur. I make you think. We dive a little bit deeper. That's what we do here. And if we're just going to throw up our hands every single time something happens and say, hey, we'll see, it's going to be pretty damn boring for all of us. That's not what we're going to do. That's not what I'm going to do. Unfortunately, for some people in that role, that's all they want to do. And of course, ultimately, we're going to see. Could be dead wrong. Now, I'm willing to listen. If you can come up with real reasons that you believe John Budmeyer is going to be a good coach and he's going to be the guy that suddenly elevates this wide receiver group that has been nothing short of brutal for a decade now, short of the two years and maybe a year and a half with Amir Smith-Marset and Brandon Smith, outside of that, it's been awful. So we can sit here and do that. 
and play patty cake ourselves, but I don't want to. I, I don't think that's fair to you. Let's think. Let's think a little bit more. Let's dig a little bit deeper. And I'll keep doing that. And I'll do that as I did with Tim Lester and keep diving deeper and deeper and see what else you can find and see if excitement is there. We'll get to March 21st when spring practice starts, and maybe we'll be at the point where the excitement will be there, and we will see real things being implemented, and we'll hear all the positive things. And it's not just going to be positivity for positive sake, because I'm not going to do that. I believe this has a chance to be a really good football team again next season. I really do. The offensive improvements, they have to be better. They just do. You can't go any direction but up from what they have been, certainly the last two and a half seasons. But I'm not just going to sit here and say, We'll see. It's not fair to you, and it's boring as hell for me. Let's talk about some fun. And that's what's happening coming up this evening with Caitlin Clark as she will break the scoring record at Carver Hawkeye Arena. A record as Iowa women's team, what it's going to take to continue to build their way up. We'll talk a little women's basketball as we wrap things up here. It is the Locked On Hawkeyes podcast. Today's episode of Locked On Hawkeyes is brought to you by the Game Time app. Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. With killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, and their best price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. Last-minute tickets, flash deals, zone deals, they're all great, and they all have them for you right inside the Game Time app. I know as we make our way down the stretch here, speaking of the Iowa-Michigan game, it's a sellout. We know how ridiculous some of those prices are on the secondary market. How about just knowing what you're actually going to pay when you tap the button? All in prices show you your total upfront with game time. You know if you're getting a great deal before you check out. I love that part of it. And game time guarantee. That means you'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less, game time will credit you 110% of the difference. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. And right now, Users, use the code LOCKDOWN for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Just download the Game Time app and use code LOCKDOWN for $20 off your first purchase. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Trent Connor back with you one final time on the Lockdown Hawkeyes podcast. Thanks for making Lockdown Hawkeyes your first listen every day. As we get ready for Caitlin Clark tonight, breaking the all-time scoring record in college basketball as she will move past Plum and go to the number one spot after scoring eight points. We'll see if it's the first quarter, second quarter, whatever it is. We know she's going to break the record, and then she will stand alone on the mountaintop. Now, there was a player back in the day before NCAA basketball was officially sanctioned by the NCAA that has more points. That'll be another one that she'll be able to hopefully cross off the list here in the uh, coming weeks ahead. But coming off the loss, what are we going to see from this squad? It was just such an odd fourth quarter. The way that they played, how tentative they were, we're just so used to Caitlin Clark. And we've been spoiled. We really have. I mean, from what we've seen out of her, her ability in the clutch to come up big, her ability in those tough moments, in those tight moments, to make the play seemingly every single time, from the game winner a year ago against Indiana to what she did earlier this season against Michigan State. We're just so used to her always making the play. That left things baffling. And the way that they played, that was just, it was odd. I think it's a hiccup. I really do. I don't believe that this is some underlying problem that's going to crop up and we're going to see this happen again. Now, three losses this year, all three of them with leads in the fourth quarter, and they gacked all three of those up. So that's something at least to keep an eye on. What else do we need to see? Look, with Molly Davis not out there, we've talked about Molly and her importance uh, as she's been sick and injured here over the last couple of games and played limited minutes. And we know you got to get her back out there because she is a facilitator. She's somebody that can help out. She can take the point guard duties for a while. She can get to the rim, something more. But I still think that there needs to be more from the bench. And it needs to be Kylie Fearbach, who is a player that has the ability off the bounce to make some plays. Is it getting her more minutes? A McKay, who can really fill it up from the outside. And really right now, Kate Martin's been knocking down some shots, but with the struggles of Gabby Marshall, maybe you do need a little bit more shooting. And Taylor McCabe can be that kind of player that can come in and knock down some shots. Now, if you're going to do that, you can't have a shooter come in for a minute and a half here before the under a 12 timeout 
in the first half and the second half and get a combined three minutes and hope that she knocks down a shot in those limited minutes. I mean, you got to get those minutes up there a little bit more. You got your get your legs underneath them when you come into a basketball game, especially as a shooter, get into the flow a little bit. So if you're going to do it, don't go halfway. Make sure you're getting her some real minutes each half if you're going to push that button. And, and Coach Bluter and company are going to go in that direction. Would love to see that. Uh, but you have to get Gabby Marshall going. And though she's a very good on-ball defender, and she's certainly on the plus level there, if her shot is struggling as much as it is, I think you're going to see a Fulter in there a whole lot more. Now, Sydney a Fulter this year, what we've seen from him, or her at five foot eleven, and her ability to be a solid rebounder, can knock down some shots, has some offensive skill to her game, and also the toughness component that she brings in. Those all things are important metrics, I believe, for this Iowa women's basketball team. The pieces are there. The opportunity is there. It all has to be clicking come March. It really does. And last year, it did. Marshall was hitting shots. We knew what you we were going to get both inside and out with Warnock and obviously with Sonano and, and how good she was in the post. And though this team is built differently, they have the pieces, but they all have to be clicking together. Caitlin has elevated her game, which is incredible to think that she has gone up yet another level, yet she is. Enjoy tonight. It's going to be a celebration. I think it's going to be domination. And I think we're going to have a fun instant reaction unlike tonight on the women's side after this one. We will be back with you tomorrow evening after the Iowa matchup against Michigan. We'll get ready for the weekend as well. Preview things over there. Another instant reaction podcast and a celebration, at least we hope, of Caitlin Clark and her accomplishments as she looks to break the all-time NCAA scoring list. Hey, also want to let you know, great things happening here on the Lockdown Network. Your team every day, that's what we do here. And Lockdown has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube, and now it's available on Amazon Fire TV in the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find on Locked On Sports Today, now available on the free Fire TV channels app. Back with you tomorrow night. Let's get a record, and let's have some fun this evening and Caitlin Clark getting ready for it. Thanks for making Locked On Hawkeyes your first listen every day. Basketball, uh, the positivity on the men's side, very difficult to find. John Budmeyer, help me out, folks. Hey, if you got something to get me excited about this hire, I am all ears. We'll talk to you again tomorrow. Go Hawks.